It's like a patchwork of gorgeousness. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my new bench. Last week, I put out a video on what I want to actually make in this bench, um, what I'm expecting it to be, and some of my ideas about where it's going to be going. So this week, I actually want to go into building the top. Um, what am I going to do to actually frame this thing up and get it ready to work on? And so I have the whole thing laminated now. Um, I have the end on. I have all of the dovetails done into the, this is going to be the end jaw vise. Uh, so this is going to be a really fun project, and there's a lot of little things in here I want to show you. So without further ado, let's jump in. This bench starts where some of my favorite projects start, with a hunk of white oak. Uh, these are going to be strips of white oak that are four inches wide by five foot long. And so I need to rip up about 24 of these. Um, I'll just start by cutting them to length with this buck saw. It makes it fairly quick and easy just to rip them, or to, to uh, cross cut them down to length. And then I need to joint one edge of every board. Um, this will give me a nice clean mark that I can then uh, rip off of. So I'm gonna use my jointer plane to bring everything down into a really nice true uh, flat edge all the way along this board. I love when you get these perfect curls from end to end. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so now that I have a, a flat edge to reference with, I'm going to use my panel gauge. I made this in an earlier video if you want to see that. And I'm going to make a mark at about four and a quarter. So I want a little bit more than I, than I need. So with about 24 of these boards, I believe it was, I need to rip them all down. Five foot long rips, uh, 24 of them long. And uh, this, uh, this, this took a little while, but uh, with the saw bench, it was really nice. I like working with the saw bench. I just made a video on this, and it made this process actually go a lot faster. Then the next step, which took even longer, was flattening and uh, preparing all the stock. So I came in with the scrub plane, and then flattened and smoothed them out until eventually I could get with the jointer plane and actually give them a nice true edge. I wanted to give them all a very clean, flat edge on both sides because I'm going to be laminating all of these boards up together to make the tabletop. And uh, if, if there's much variation in them, you're going to have a problem. And I ran into a problem later, but I'll be talking about that uh, then. So for right now, just uh, do a good job of flattening the boards. <laughs> So I lay them all out and I uh, get ready to uh, uh, put in some recesses for the hardware. I'm going to be putting on this Veritas um, twin screw end vise and there needs to be a chunk and either end taken out so that the screw can recess into the bench top um, as opposed to underneath it. So I need to mark out several boards that I can cut a notch out of. And here you can see the not I'm notch I'm cutting out of this board. I'm going to do this to seven of them um, so that the screw has a place to recess into the, uh, into the body behind it. And then I can um, lay them all out and get ready for the glue up. Here you can see the recesses in this end um, so that the screw from the twin screw has a place to go. So I'm actually just uh, slopping on the glue. I used quite a bit for this. <laughs> I was going to use a glue roller, but uh, I couldn't find mine, so a brush works perfectly fine. So then one by one, or in this case like three by three, I go through and pull out all the pieces, laminate them together, and voila, put on a bunch of clamps. Now here you notice I have a big beam on the side closest to me. That beam is there to keep this stack straight. So if there's any variation in my planing thickness, um, one edge will be perfectly straight and the other edge will be bowed as opposed to both edges being bowed. And that was very important later on as I found uh, when I took it out of clamps that there was a large variation. So I have one edge that's perfectly straight I can go off of. So I'm going to mix up some epoxy with uh, some transtent dye to fill some of the gaps. Um, a lot of people are going to be asking about all this glue on my bench top. That's not a problem. There is so much paste wax on this thing. Uh, that glue just pops right off and that's actually kind of fun. So I let it dry out and then clean it off. But this epoxy I'm going to be using to fill all of the voids and cracks and any knots that may be showing in the top of this bench. Basically just trying to give it a little bit more of a smooth top. And then I can plane off that with all of the glue that I have to come off. But first I want to cut it uh, to length. So I can uh, use a, a large uh, 90 degree square 
Is there a square that's 90, not 90 degrees? I don't know. <laughs> and then cut it down, and I'll use my low angle jack to smooth it out, um, removing any of the, uh, the problems that the saw may have caused. Now give it a nice flat end on that, ready for the end plate to join to. Now you can see this top is an absolute mess. Um, it's going to take a little bit to flatten it out, and some of the places are up you know, 16th of an inch or more. So it's going to take a few passes from the scrub plane. Now I'm not going to actually flatten the top here. I just want to get it uh, relatively flat. I'm going to use some winding sticks and a scrub plane and a joiner to bring it down close to flat. Um, I'm going to be doing the main flattening once I get it up on legs. But for right now, I'm just kind of getting it close to where it needs to be so that I can work with it in the future. And I can use the winding sticks and do everything I need to do. But I'll have a video coming out on the actual flattening for those of you who want to see it. The other thing I want to do is make sure that the sides are perfectly 90 degrees to the top. So I can use a square and plane uh, to bring those into true um, and get them ready for the last bit of lamination. So yeah, this is actually kind of fun. But the last bit of lamination is putting um, uh, black walnut on the front face and then on the back skirt. So this will be the front face. It will be ripped to uh, four and a quarter inches just like the other pieces. Um, I didn't laminate the other because I want to put a dovetail connection into the end cap as opposed to making a full sliding dovetail all the way across. On the back skirt, I want it to have this live edge. It had this really cool bark in it, and uh, the bottom edge of it was uh, wavy and live edge. And I kind of like that. So I want to clean up the bark, um, get that ready. This is the bottom edge of that back skirt. Just using a uh, draw knife to do the majority of the removing waste, uh, removal of the waste. And then I'll come in with a series of spoke shaves. This is actually a spoke shave I made in an re earlier video. Um, I love using this thing. It just it feels so nice in this, especially walnut. It, walnut is a pleasure to work with. This is one that was given to me by a friend a while ago, and it, I, you, I love working with spoke shaves. They're just so much fun. Um, yeah, got to get yourself a series of spoke shaves. <laughs> but for the end cap and the main jaw vise, I'm going to be using this hunk of walnut. Uh, it's two and a half inches thick by six inches, so it is a beast. I was very, very pleased to find this scrap. Um, and I can cut it to length and flatten out and joint out the edges, bring it all up nice and square and true. Now I need to join these uh, two uh, front and back faces, and I'm going to be cutting dovetails. Because they're five foot long, I'm cutting it way up in the air. In hindsight, I probably should have done it on the saw, on the saw bench, uh, but oh well, that worked well. <laughs> so then once I cut down at an angle, I can then come back in and cut the shoulder of the, uh, the tail. Now on the large skirt, I'm going to have two tails, and on the front piece, I'm only going to have one tail. So for the two tails on the, uh, the back skirt, um, I can just come in and chop them out, just like a normal dovetail, just a little bigger. And it goes fairly easily. I do have videos on making dovetails if you want to see that. Now it will be a half-blind dovetail, um, and so I'm laying it out on the chop or the end piece and tracing that out. And then I can come in with a dovetail saw and cut in at a 45 degree angle along the angle of the dovetail. So a little bit of a fun cut, but uh, not too bad. Then, just like removing the waste in between the tails or in between the pins, I'm going to do the same, but I'm not going to go all the way through. It's just piece by piece all the way down um, until I remove out the tail. I might do a video here soon on half-line dovetails, but I haven't done that yet. Then you can see how they just slide into place. I love it when they fit perfectly right off of the uh, right off the saw and chisel. Happiness. <laughs> So for the end cap, I need to actually put in the hardware for the end vise. So I had cut out the notches earlier into the top itself, but I need to lay out where these two screws will get mounted into the end cap. So once I have those laid out, then I can bore out the holes, uh, making very sure to keep the, uh, the bit square in both directions. So I have a nice hole going all the way through both chops. Now the second hole needs to be a little larger. Uh, which if I thought about it, I probably would have done that with a auger, but oh well. Um, I can just use the, uh, uh, use the carving chisels to make it a little bit larger. Just one of the things you learn after uh, messing up. <laughs> so oh well. Uh, I also need to cut out a square recess for the hardware to fit down into. And so I just used a uh, chisel, like cutting a bow tie, um, to cut out a square slot and then put the router into it. 
and give it a nice flush flat bottom. After that I can make sure that it fits and the uh, hardware slides down in nicely. This will be the screw for, well there will be two of these into the board for the ten twin screw. Now I need to uh, put the screws in uh, so that it will hold it in place permanently. Not that it wasn't a very tight fit, the screws will just make sure that nothing shifts. For the final glue up, um, I start by putting one tail into the end panel and then I'll glue up the other one and slide it in. The end panel is not glued on, it is floating um, and that is so that there's expansion and contraction across the top. Um, it will allow it to slide on those dovetails a little bit. Um, I will be putting in a pin in the middle in the future, uh, but for right now this is all that there will be. So you can see how this whole thing kind of squeezes together and I can then put the clamps on. After letting it sit overnight, I can pull the clamps out and flip it over and get my first view at what this top will look like. And I'm loving the white oak and walnut. The light contrast between the two is fantastic with this live edge. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing this thing on legs. Um, happy. There you have it. Uh, this is a, I'm just, I'm in love with this bench. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to it with the live edge on that side, uh, the beefy chop. Uh, this is going to be an absolute blast of a tool to play with and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. So hopefully uh, next week I will have the framing up of the legs. Um, I'm figuring it's going to be about two or three more videos, framing up the legs, putting it together. Um, and then I'm probably going to have a, a video on each of the devices, why I'm using that, how I'm installing them, and how they're going about that. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm still looking for the uh, the chop material for the two leg vices. Um, I haven't found exactly what I'm looking for. Um, something big and something dry that I can use now. But until I find those, uh, we'll keep marching along. So. That's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is a really, really fun one for me. Uh, if you did like it, please hit like and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my second channel over here. I do want to say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why this video is, is coming out and I get to keep making videos like this. If you'd like to find out more, Patreon's right over here. And until next time, have a wonderful day.